G'day. Today we're going to look at the first of the four steps in the procedure for finding the graph of a quadratic equation. And I hope you've been watching the previous videos. But the first step is to find the y-intercept. And you might remember that we always do that by substituting x equals 0. Now this is perhaps the easiest of the four steps, and uh, in some cases it's extremely easy. Now what makes it easy sometimes is when the quadratic equation you're given is in the form that is ideal for this procedure. These are the three major forms of the quadratic equation that you'll be familiar with, or that you will become familiar with. The general form is fully expanded with the three separate terms, an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. Now, sometimes it's possible that a coefficient is zero, so x squared minus five would be a satisfactory quadratic. Uh, x squared minus four x would be. X squared by itself would be. Uh, but an x squared term always has to be there. But this is the general form. The factorized form, or the factored form, is obtained when the quadratic equation is separated into two factors that are multiplied. I've, I've got quite simple ones here, x minus 1 times x plus 4. We'll learn later that this is ideal for something else, uh, but this is sometimes the form in which you're given the quadratic equation. And the completed square form looks the most complicated, but it's actually brilliant for another part of the procedure. So it has its strengths, but it's more clumsy when it comes to finding the, uh, the y-intercept. And uh, its normal form is to have the y value somewhat modified, the x value somewhat modified, so it looks like y equals something times x squared. Occasionally this is broken up and the constant is brought over here, and this is sometimes also called the completed square form of the quadratic, or of the parabola, some people say, but more precisely of the quadratic equation. So we're going to look at how this uh, unfolds with each of these three major forms. Now, in each case, we substitute x equals 0, but I, I simply want to point out the following. That when 0 is substituted in the general form, so we get 0 squared minus 4 lots of 0 minus 5, the first two terms are always 0. It doesn't matter what the coefficients are. They can be as complicated or as simple as you wish. Uh, you could even have radicals or fractions or decimals. So it would be 0.45 over the square root of 17 minus 1 or something, times 0 squared is still 0. Uh, because these are 0, it's the last term becomes the y-intercept. So here it is. So any time you have an equation in the general form, the y-intercept will be the y-value that is the constant. So I'd say therefore the intercept is at, again I use the letter i, x equals 0, that's what we required, and y equals minus 5. So if I had an equation y equals uh, 7x squared minus 3x plus 11, I know that that is the y-intercept. So when I graph the equation, it will go through plus 11 or minus 5 on the y-axis, as the case may be. I know that's a rather shocking little graph there, but it was just meant to illustrate the point. So the general form is ideal for this aspect of the analysis. It's not so good for others, but it's brilliant for this. Now, the other two forms are less, uh, less pleasant. 
actually I'll use a slightly wavy line for this. If we substitute x equals 0 in these, we get, in the first occasion, this one, we will get y minus 1 is 2 lots of x plus 3, sorry, 0 plus 3 squared. 0 plus 3, of course, is worth 3. 3 squared is 9, which is 18. And since y minus 1 is 18, we have to add 1 to both sides and get 19. So in this case, the intercept would be way, way up the y-axis. Uh, I'll just write this quickly. x equals 0 again, uh, and this time the y values at 19. We substitute in this one. y would be 3 lots of 0 minus 1 squared plus 5. Notice in, in all the cases here, you still make the substitution quite nicely, but there's some working out involved. Here we have minus 1 squared, and always remember when you're squaring a negative number that it means minus 1 times minus 1, so you end up with two minus signs. And the answer is always positive. So minus 1 squared is plus 1, times 3 is 3, which is 8. So in this case, the intercept is at 0, 8. Now I am squeezing things in because I'm running out of room. And the last one is the factored form. Uh, we would substitute 0 and have 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 4, which is minus 1 times 4, which is minus 4. So we say therefore the intercept is at 0 minus 4. Now, that's been a little rushed and scrappy. Uh, in each analysis for a quadratic equation, it's just that amount of work. But the simplest one, of course, as I say, is with the general form. That's all I wish to say about this. The first of those four aspects of analysing a quadratic equation where we're finding the y-intercept is in fact quite easy. And uh, I encourage you to practice this as you analyse quadratics and graph them and form their parabolas. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, leave a comment if you wish to, and subscribe so you can find out about the subsequent videos. I must mention that the next videos are going to be about the second procedure, which is finding the x-intercepts which is where most students come to grief in analysing quadratic equations because that means factorising. And uh, I'll be producing a series of videos about how to factorise quadratics. So please keep a look out for those. Thank you.